Okay, everybody, this is Imar Sabatuk, the Sports Inquirer, and we're joined quite often, thankfully, since season's back up and running by uh, Michelle Collier, the head coach of Georgia Tech Volleyball. The team just performed at the Long Beach Tournament in California, uh, split two matches. Before we get to some specifics of those matches, uh, Coach, how was the experience in California heading out to the West Coast uh, for the first time in a long time for you and the program? Yeah, no, a great experience, um, great flights. So that was awesome. Thank you, Delta. Uh, but we had, you know, smooth flights. And I think that uh, we got the time to do some team bonding, some team activities, reconnect with some alumni. Um, you know, uh, we did an activity with uh, Reed Pretty, which is a U.S. Olympian gold medalist uh, on the men's volleyball team. And he did some some uh, mindset stuff with our group. So it was a pretty cool trip. We were able to do a little bit of everything and compete against two great teams um, in an iconic uh, gym at, at the pyramid there at Long Beach State. So it was pretty nice to, to be able to get out there, uh, see that good competition uh, and really uh, make the most out of the trip in all, all ways possible. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, and you were able to win that first match against the Long Beach State three to one. Uh, before we get specific with the players, you jumped out so quickly on the first set with a big lead, won that first set 25 to 15. Uh, Julia Bergman, I was watching it, I think I had two, three aces in a row at one point, uh, was just very big on the serve. How big was that for you and the team just to get off to such a big start facing a team like Long Beach on their court? Yeah, definitely. Uh, it was one of the things that, that we talked about was starting um, better than some of the other matches that we, we started um, in the previous week. And so... Uh, it was definitely a, a central focal point for us. We knew that our serving uh, was going to be important, uh, but I really felt like we were, you know, keyed in, uh, focused, and uh, was really able to execute at a high level in the beginning of the matches, which was, was great. Yeah, and Julia, she finished with double-double with 17 kills, 12 digs. She has four straight matches with those double-doubles, all tournament team. But what about her serving? Look at the stats. She's one of the better servers in the conference and uh, maybe even nationally. How important is that serve for you? And she gets you several aces of contest. How valuable is that just towards your offensive or defensive arsenal just in general? Yeah, no, very uh, important, you know, in, in our scouting and the things that we're doing and how we're preparing. We're always um, strategically trying to place her at the service line in certain rotations on the other team and, and things like that because we feel like she um, adds a little extra layer Um I think she just serves tough and she's consistent. She can put the ball anywhere. Uh, so for us, it's a, it's a good advantage that we use it as a strategy as well a lot of times. Yeah, and Mariner Brambilla was also on the all-conference or the all-tournament team. But outside hitter, your freshman, Bianca Bertolino, 27, 21 kills in that match, only had one error for a high hitting percentage. But just what about this freshman outside and her really making a mark and placing herself in your rotation? Yeah, Bianca is stepping in, playing great. I think at least five or six of those kills were at the end of that that third set there where we went 33-31. So mm -hmm. she was, uh, you know, with our backs against the wall and she was executing in those times like she was executing when it was one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, so really proud of that, really proud of how she really super composed and, and just responding well, really adjusted, um, you know, taking on a leadership role early on in recruitment in her career and it's uh, definitely helpful you know we we need everybody to win these matches and and you know different people have had some stellar performances from from time to time and uh, that Long Beach State match she definitely stood out um, and carried some some heavy load there uh, during the match for us. Yeah you mentioned you had a chance to sweep that match in that third set you lost you dropped at 33 to 31. What do you say to the huddle I mean that's a long uh, long set to deal with and you dropped it, but you're able to rebound in the fourth set when that 25 to 15. But what was, is that just having a mature roster that you've been in these, those type of positions, conference play and now in the NCAA tournament that you're not too worried, have to say too much, they know how to recover from losing a set like that? Yeah, I think we, we know that the game uh, at this level, um, it's full of ups and downs. And sometimes, you know, we, we didn't take advantage of of some situations in that third game and we, we Long Beach executed well at some points and you know they earned that that win and that set but we knew that we were playing well we just needed to execute a little bit better in certain things um, so we just had to go back to the things that we're doing and 
and continue to force them to be consistent in executing the things that they were able to do in the third game to to get away with that set. So um, just really proud, but it's just a, a normal understanding that at this level, uh, you know, uh, sweeps don't, they, they look nice, but they're not as easy as they look, you know? And so you understand that every team um, is very capable of competing with us at any level. So uh, I think it's one of the things that we got to continue to get better is to continue to create our consistency and find our flow and really don't let up um, in certain situations. And I felt like really proud of how we bounced back from that game, uh, but we definitely needed to have executed a little bit better um, in that game to not be in that four set situation. But since we didn't do it, at least we responded well to the four mm. set and got it done then. So uh, I'll take that. <laughs> sure, absolutely. And then one more note on the Long Beach before we move to UCLA. We've spoken in the past about how you want to get your middles involved and get more blocks uh, in the system. Thir 13 blocks in that match. Your senior middles, Breland, Morissette, Kayla Kaiser, each had five, five blocks and four blocks respectively. Uh, how big is that for you just to, uh, we talk about the digs and being in good positions, but getting that many blocks, what does that say about those middles being able to do that for you? Yeah, no, I thought Breland had a great match. I think Kayla really stepped up too and, and found, found ways to help. Uh, but Bree had a great hitting and blocking uh, match, that, that match, and she was uh, really made some big plays against some of their big guns that were executing uh, at certain times, you know, so it was really cool to see her play with that aggressiveness and really, uh, really get after it. And I think that blocking is something that we are definitely working on on a daily basis that we are trying to get better and better. Um, but our middles and them being a, a primary part of our offense and our defense is also something that we're really working hard to keep getting better. So, um, you know, hats off to those guys for, for executing. Uh, when we needed them to execute and uh, I'm excited to see them keep growing and us keep getting better. Yeah. And this just, it, it relates to blocking, but I, I'm always curious as a player, you played a very long time. You've been coaching a long time as well. Is it mentally, is it better when you get a good kill or when you get a good block? Where do you, where do you think the players do you prefer to kind of have that and get the team going? You yeah. Understand think, what I'm saying? I think big blocks are definitely a huge momentum builder. Uh, the big kills come a little more often. The blocks are not as often. So you understand just the, the high level of execution that you need to have for that play. Um, so I would go with the block. I think that the block is a really a big uh, momentum shifter. Uh, and if you really take advantage of that, you can really put some pressure on, on the other side in their offense. So um, I, I think that I would take a, a big block over a big kill. Yeah, and have you actually, even in the middle of a match, see a, when you're facing a team like their block is so big you've have you had to alter your offense just completely because you realize we're not gonna be able to get many kills at the net against or at least from that certain angle uh, against a certain team does that really just alter your strategy a lot yeah yeah for sure where we're setting along the net you know who we're setting against um those are all things that we we talk about you know how do we put you know, kind of our players in the best position possible to score. But obviously there are situations where you can't really avoid what's in front of you. So you really just have to have shots. You know, you got to know how to use the block. You got to know how to change up the speed. You can't just power through a block all the time. So I think that our hitters are learning that, maturing with that. And that comes with just playing and maturity as a player, you know, to really know how to tool the block tip the ball, change up the pace, uh, move the ball around. Those are all uh, things that you need to have as a hitter in order to try, when, especially when you're facing big blocks, you know? So um, it's definitely, it shouldn't be intimidating. You shouldn't, you should have resources to use against that, but. Um, that was the wrong word. Intimidation. That sounds really bad. <laughs> uh, but I, mean, I mean, no, <laughs> no just... but it could, it could be for some people, you know, I think that it shouldn't be because it's part of the game. I mean, you, you're going to have big blockers on you. This game is physical. You know, so you, as a hitter, you got to have resources and as a team and as setters and things like that. That's why we, we have to constantly think about what we're doing and how we're strategically putting ourselves in the best position to be successful. Sometimes we have no other answer than throwing a high ball outside and that's what we got to deal with. But we practice that, you know, we practice that against a big block and hopefully we're executing it more than not. But um, 
yeah, it's part of the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then we have to move on to UCLA match. Uh, you drop that one three to one. Got off to a slow start. Uh, dropped that first set twenty five to seventeen, and you got the third set. But it seemed like you were just kind of working from behind uh, that entire match. Is that the impression that you have from that contest? And what can you take away from that as you progress through the season? Yeah, for sure. I felt like UCLA did did a great job. They're a great team, um, you know, and they, they really made us uncomfortable, and we couldn't really get in a flow of some of the things that we do well um, consistently when it comes to just our side out uh, percentage or our serving and defense. Uh, you know, we weren't really able to put a lot of pressure on them with our serves. There were a lot of missed serves in that match. And we were, you know, we're, we were serving uh, De Libero a lot as well. So, I mean, we didn't really execute the way we wanted to execute starting at the service line to put ourselves in best position to defend. But, um, I think they earned it. You know, they were the better team that day. They just played well. They played more consistent. Um, I think we know that as a team, we could have performed better and gave ourselves a better chance. Uh, we also saw that we can compete. You know, we, we the, the second and the third game, uh, one we won, the other one was pretty close. So we know that, that you know, we, we could have done a little bit better and executed a little bit better, but um, CLA is a great team and they're gonna do some really good things this year. Uh, I know, and our team is going to keep getting better. So I think it was a great match for us. I think that we learned a lot um, and it, it, it gave us, you know, gave us a lot of things to, to focus on and work on and keep getting better. Uh, so that was good to, to happen early in the season. Yeah. And then the Long Beach match, you, you kept your lineup pretty consistent, at least the start of each set. In the, in the UCLA match, you started your middle Cali Engelman. She started the second and third set. Isabella D'Amico, we've seen her play quite a bit even last year. She started a third and fourth set as your setter. When you make those decisions, is that just a feel of maybe changing up your starting lot, your starting rotation from one set to another? Or is that more of like a plan thing that, you know, maybe second or third set, maybe want to go with these starting six or well, seven technically uh, yeah, no, on, just, in your rotation? Yeah, no, just didn't feel like we were executing uh, well in those positions, you know, and we needed other people to step up and see if they could deliver uh, a better execution than that. Uh, I think that's just part of the game, you know, and everybody's not always going to be on their A game. And, and I think that we have more than capable people in the bench to, to help us out of certain situations. Um, you know, and, and a lot of times if your offense uh, is not killing the ball as efficient as you need them to be killing the ball, then your defense needs to play a bigger role. And so maybe certain players can help your defense a little bit better than others. Uh, you know, strength and differences are di- uh, strength and weaknesses are different in every player. Um, and yeah, I was just finding a way to just get the flow. I just didn't feel like we really, you know, we were feeling too good about ourselves and the things that we were doing. And uh, that's what a team is for is to just, you know, try to bail some people out of situations and see if we can step up and, and help. And they did. Um, and it was it was great to see that. And, the, you know, we just kind of kept trying to really find our mojo and we just couldn't really get it going in that match. It was a match that we never really felt like we were playing our best volleyball the way that we know how to play. Yeah, and then finally, you find you have your home match, you open, your home opener and the Georgia Tech Classic this weekend, starting with Mississippi State. You also face Indiana and Oklahoma. First of all, how excited is the team and you to be back home playing in a home match with we know how every how last year went with the restrictions, and it seems like there are not as many as far as part going attending the matches. And we'll start with that before we get to the team. Just being back home and having I know your crowd. I've been there. You know, great atmosphere, yeah. uh, very intense, and you're going to have less restrictions now. People are going to be able to come and participate. For sure. I mean, we're super excited to be back at O'Keefe. Uh, you know, it's it's a different level of energy and just atmosphere than than anywhere else in the country. So. We're definitely excited to be home, uh, to be comfortable in our home floor. I think that our team has responded really well for some great teams on the road. And, uh, you know, it would be nice to have the fans back because we're back to full capacity. Our band will be here. Mm -hmm. Uh, This place is going to be rocking, you know, and we're going to have three great teams that are coming in to really challenge us this weekend. So um, we definitely have to get ready for their best. Uh, They're playing really good volleyball. And, uh, you know, we, we got to be a better team than we were the, the first two weeks. So we're, we're working on, on our side of things, too, and continuing to get better uh, and just excited to protect our home court. 
I was going to say you face Mississippi State. They're five and one on the season. Uh, they recently played in Houston in a tournament with some very good teams as well. Uh, seems like looking at their, their reading the recaps and stats, seems like a deep roster as far as their offensive end of things. Uh, what about that matchup and uh, what do they present against you that you're going to have to you know, be facing? Yeah, I mean, a, a team that's very well coached. You know, they're, they, um, I think they're coming in with a lot of momentum. Uh, I think they're they're playing really well. They got some good energy going in their program, and I, and they're very physical, uh, very deep in their roster. There's a lot of players that are that are seeing uh, playing time, you know. So all these things um, makes it even more challenging to to scout. We don't really know uh, who's going to be playing where, uh, you know. And and I think that it's we got a big target on our backs now, and, and we're we're always expecting the best of our opponents. Uh, and I think they're going to give us their best, um, you know, and their best is pretty good right now. So we, we, we got to we gotta get ready for a great match on Thursday um, and then just kind of keep going from there. But that's where we are. All right. Well, Michelle, thank you for your time. We greatly appreciate it. And good luck this weekend. Thank you. Appreciate you.